Hey guys, welcome to the Houston Zoo. My name is Kendall and I'm a hoofstock keeper here, so that means that I'm one of the keepers that takes care of our giraffe herd. So I'm here today to talk a little bit about these guys and I can answer the questions that you guys leave in the comments. This right here is a Sally. She is our oldest female that we currently have at the zoo and she is a little bit over 15 feet tall. Um, so she is actually not our tallest giraffe here, but she is very high up there. You can tell her apart from the other giraffe because she has a very, very dark face which you guys are probably getting a very good close-up look at. One of these guys' unique features is their tongue. Look at that. So that is a very long, very dark tongue that you, these guys use to grip their food and pull food into their mouth. It is what's known as prehensile because they can actually grasp stuff with it. So Asali is demonstrating how they would use that in the wild to pull, pull food into their mouth. You can do it. She's also very tall and can just reach very far. There we go. So that tongue can be 18... 18 inches long by the time they're done fully growing, sometimes even longer. And that dark color is probably a form of sunscreen. We get asked that question a lot. Why is their tongue so purple? You can see it, that she's sticking it out of her mouth. That tongue being dark probably helps stop the sunburn from happening on her tongue. These guys are found in Africa, um, throughout many different areas in Sub-Saharan Africa. These guys are found in a lot of the uh, savannas and scrub deserts and things like that, where they walk along and they'll graze out all the brows and trees and leaves. It's what they eat. And the spot pattern that they have. So I'm sure you guys can see her spots very, very well. That spot pattern is 100% unique to every giraffe. No two giraffes have the exact same spot pattern. And that actually probably helps them thermoregulate, which is a fancy word for controlling their own body temperature. Um, so because these guys live in an area that is pretty hot most of the time, they need to find ways to release that heat to the environment and the blood r runs very, very close to their skin in those dark patches. And so those dark patches actually help them release heat out into the air so that their body temperature stays constant. That is Bobby over there. Bobby is almost one year old. Um, so he is at this point pretty independent from mom. He still likes being around other giraffes, but he can eat solid food, he can reach things that he normally wouldn't be able to reach before. Um, he is a little over 10 feet tall at this point, which is very normal for a one-year-old giraffe. It is actually his birthday, one year birthday, one week from today. So as you guys can see, there's that big door open in the background. It's because our giraffe have access to the barn. It means that they're given the choice during the day whether they want to be inside here with us or whether they want to be outside in their outdoor yard habitat. Right now, Hasali is choosing to be in here with us because we have lettuce, and that is one of her favorite foods in the whole wide world. She also eats things like carrots and apples and even a grain diet. All right, Dominic asked, what is her favorite enrichment? That's a very good question. She likes puzzle feeders. So what we'll do is we have all kinds of different toys and, and plastic bottles and all kinds of fun shaped things um, that we will cut holes in and put food in. And so they have to stick their tongue into those bottle feeders and pull the food out. And that's one of Asali's favorite enrichment items. Um, we'll see if we can get her to come back in just a minute. Sometimes they'll walk out and they'll walk right back in once they realize that food is inside. Enrichment is something that we do with all of our animals here at the zoo. So they, uh, we have all kinds of different enrichment and it's all meant to encourage different kinds of natural behaviors. So with giraffes, one of the things that they spend the most time doing is foraging for food. So they kind of will walk along and eat a little bit and then walk along and then eat a little bit. And that's what we want to do here. We want to increase that foraging time. So we have lots of puzzle feeders for this guys, for our, these uh, guys, just so that they can be doing here what they would be doing in the wild. We do also have daily giraffe feedings here at the Houston Zoo where you guys can actually be feeding the giraffe romaine lettuce. Um, I bet some of you guys have actually done it before. It's a really cool experience. Um, we have them daily at 11 and two. So you can get up close with these guys and just see how big these heads are up close and in person. Um, a giraffe's head alone probably weighs about 250 pounds. They are very big animals. And they're tall. Everyone knows that they're tall, right? But a lot of people don't quite realize how tall. Um, sorry, Vivian's asking, how tall is mom? So this is actually not Bobby's mom. Um, the baby's mom is Camille, and she is only about 13 feet tall. She's actually kind of a short giraffe. But Joshua, the dad, is very, very tall. And Bobby seems to be taking after his dad, and he is growing very, very fast. This is a Sally. She is sort of an, a step 
aunt to baby Bobby. Um, and so she is a little bit over 15 feet tall. So I don't know if you guys can see, but the railing that I'm standing next to right now, this right here, this is actually 14 feet off the ground and Asali can easily reach her head over it to eat this food. So if that's 14 feet, she's gotta be at least 15 feet tall. Hey, there's Bobby again, and he brought in his friend Kapuki. We do have one zebra that lives with our giraffe herd here. We also have three female ostriches that share that space. Um, oh, and hey, the whole herd's coming in. Um, so Camille just walked through the front door. That is Bobby's mom, and then Gigi is behind her. So that is, again, a step aunt. So Camille is actually not related to Asali here, the big one. But Gigi and Camille, the two that are kind of up close and personal right now, are stepsisters same dad different mom hey bobby do you want that so bobby is eating solid food he is learning how to be a big kid giraffe he's learning how to grab things with his tongue and pull it into his mouth he very much likes lettuce as well so he's not quite tall enough yet to reach the feeding platform but he is getting there there we go so right now this is mom and mom and baby so we got Bo camellia up here bobby I'll be down at the bottom. So he's not quite tall enough to reach his head over the bars yet, obviously, but he is getting ever, ever taller every day. Every day he realizes he can reach something that he couldn't reach the day before. And you can see the difference, hopefully, between us saying that Sally has a very dark face, Camille has a very light face. We like to joke that she's the blondest of the herd um, because she does have such a light coloration. Bobby seems to have inherited that from her as well. He is also a fairly light colored giraffe, especially in his face, you can see. So Camille is significantly shorter. You can see she can't even reach over the barge. She's only, a, she's right at 14 feet if you count these ossicones on the back of her head. Um, and that's what these are right here. These are called ossicones. They're not actually horns um, because they are covered in fur, as I'm sure you guys can see. Um, because they are covered in fur, they also have a lot of blood flow running through them, so they're not antlers. Um, so scientists kind of created their own category for what these guys have. Um, and they are something that giraffe are born with. Giraffe are one of only two species in the world right now that have these ossicones. So males and females have them. They use their ossicones to defend themselves against predators and to spar with other males. They kind of work as uh, the points of contact when they're sparring and they're hitting each other with their heads. But they are born with them. So when a baby giraffe is born, those ossicones lie flat on the back of their head. And then over time, they, they start to stick up and they calcify. So they'll actually end up fused to the giraffe's skull. Females have them as well as males, although the females tend to have smaller, thinner ones. The males tend to get the big, bulky os ossicones. Are they endangered? That is a good question with a somewhat complicated answer. Um, so right now they are listed as vulnerable, um, but that's because right now all giraffes out there are treated as being the same species. However, there's new genetic data coming out all the time as scientists are continuing to study giraffe and study their blood and their genetics, where we're starting to see that it's possible that there's more than one species of giraffe out there. So if there is more than one species of giraffe out there, then some of them are very likely going to be considered endangered. Right now, reticulated giraffe in particular seem like they would be endangered. Um, but as a whole, giraffe populations are declining, largely due to habitat loss. Um, and so we are doing lots of things to try and reverse that and make sure that this population starts to rebound. Like I said, one of the most important parts is just protecting their habitat. These guys are big guys. They have to find a lot of food in order to keep going. Um, and so we need to make sure that we're protecting the spaces where their food grows so that they can, they can live, live there peacefully. And these guys get along with a lot of other species. Here at the zoo, they live with ostrich and zebra. In the wild, they'd be found with literally thousands of other species of birds and mammals and reptiles and all kinds of things. Um, oh, so Anna is asking how old are they? It's going to be a little bit different for each giraffe. So um, Camille is right around, let me see, I got to get this, I got to get this right. Every year they get older. Camille is right around six years old. Bobby is turning one next year or next week. Gigi is about four, and Asali is nine, I believe. So they are, 
These guys are all adults except for Bobby. Um, Gigi is still growing. She probably hasn't reached her full size yet, but Camille and Asali have. So that's Gigi that you're looking at right now. Hunter asks, what is their favorite food? Well, just like people, each of these guys have their own individual favorite food. So it's kind of depending on which giraffe we're talking about. Most of them really like romaine lettuce, which is what I was feeding a minute ago and also what um, you guys get to feed out when you come to our giraffe feeding platform. But they also really like um, apple and browse. So browse is when we actually just cut branches right off a tree and let the giraffe eat those leaves right off the branch. So they have a few favorite species. They really love mulberry. They really love hackberry and a few other species of browse that they tend to like. They like um, a browse called Japanese blueberry in the winter. All right, this is Gigi. So Gigi was the youngest until Bobby came along. But as you can see, she is quite tall, significantly taller than Camille, even though she's older. Gigi was actually born here. Asali is her mom. She's lived her whole life here. Oh, so I was saying before, these guys get along with lots of different things in the wild. They live around many, many other species, and so they live around these guys here at the zoo. They live with ostriches, they live with zebra, without incident. They don't really mind when other things are around them. Um, the other animals are pretty good at staying out from underfoot and they like to eat a lot of the same things. So in the wild, these guys are more or less the alarm call of the savanna. Giraffe have very good eyesight. I'm sure you guys can see how big and bold their eyes are. I always love their eyelashes. Um, so these guys have very good eyesight and because they are so tall, they can see very far distances away. So if they notice a predator or any kind of threat moving, usually giraffe are the first to see it. So if the giraffe start to run, a lot of times all the other animals in the area will start to run too. Even if they have no idea what they're running from, they see the giraffe running, they figure, hey, we might as well get out too. So because of that, they're kind of the early warning system that savanna animals have if there's some kind of danger approaching. Mariah asks, what is their lifespan? Um, again, a good question with something of a complicated answer. In general, these guys can live into their 20s. Um, that is, you'll get a slightly different answer depending on if you're looking at males or females. Female giraffe will live longer than male giraffe. Um, they're just a little bit smaller, and so stuff wears out uh, less than it does on the males. So most of our, actually all of our herd at this point is very young. Everyone's under the age of 10. In the wild, it would be very uncommon for a giraffe to reach 20 years old. They definitely live longer in zoos and in human care than they do out in the wild, just because here they don't have to worry about things like predators. And giraffe do have predators. Um, and a healthy adult giraffe does not have to worry about too, too much. But young ones, old ones, sick ones can definitely fall prey to lions because they hunt in groups. Um, do they sleep standing up? Yes, mostly. So giraffes for the most part do sleep standing up. The babies will sometimes lay down, but these guys will only sleep for maybe 10 to 15 minutes at a time. Um, and they all combined, they probably spend only between one and two hours of sleep on any given day. Um, so they just take little cat naps throughout the day. So they tend to just stay up. You can actually see them sleeping sometimes at the zoo. They'll kind of stand up, they'll stop moving, their ears will droop a little bit, their eyes will kind of half close, and they'll just stand still for a few minutes. And then they'll just suddenly start, wake, wake up, you know, open their eyes, start moving around again. And that was a little giraffe nap. Um, they can rest though, every now and then they will sort of lay down where they fold up their legs to where their chest and belly's touching the ground and their legs are folded up underneath them. At that point, they will rest, but usually they don't sleep like that. They don't sleep with their head like all the way down on the ground like we do. Shauna asks, are we expecting babies? It's very possible. Joshua is here as a breeding male, um, but we cannot currently confirm that any are pregnant. Female giraffe can get pregnant um, within a couple months of giving birth. So most adult giraffes spend, female giraffe will spend most of their life pregnant. Their gestation is about 15 months long. So when they get pregnant, they are pregnant for a long time. Wes asks, how tall can they get? That's a very good question. So on average, I wanna say giraffe will be somewhere between 14 and 17 feet tall. There are reports of individual giraffe that can be even taller than that. 
Um, I think there are some unconfirmed reports of giraffe reaching into the 20 foot range, but that is definitely, those are, those are like the NBA players of the giraffe world. That is not necessarily the normal height for a giraffe to reach. Don asks, how much food do they eat in a day? They actually eat a lot of different kinds of food, so they will get about 100 pounds of grain each day. So grain is like a pelleted diet that they can chew on that we put in the buckets. And then they will also get alfalfa hay. They get about another 50 pounds of that at least every day. Um, and then they'll also get 20 heads of lettuce and, um, and lots of veggies. So they'll get yam, they'll get carrots, they even get a little bit of apple, which I know is not a veggie, but still. Uh, Gavin asks, how fast can they run? These guys hit speeds in the 30 mile an hour range. That doesn't necessarily mean that they can sustain that forever. They're not exactly distance runners, but they can cover ground pretty quickly. Um, when they run, they do sort of a pacing gait, which you can see as they move around where both legs on one side of their body will move at the same time, um, as opposed, which is more like the way that camels and llamas walk as opposed to the way that say a horse or a cow would walk. All right, guys, I think that's about it for today. Thank you for joining us and thank you for learning all about our giraffe herd. I really encourage you to join us next Wednesday at 11 a.m. for our next Facebook Live so you guys can meet some of our other animals here.